Well, hello everybody, and thank you for coming. Uh, this is the update on what the IPRS SIG has been doing in the last few months. Uh, I've given versions of this talk in the past, so some of these will probably look familiar. I'll try to have a mix of like general introduction and new content. Um, uh, let's get started. So this will start with a quick recap of what the SIG is doing. We'll then talk about uh, SIG deliverables and recent work we have, and we'll close with a few words on what is coming up down the pipe. So first of all, what's the IPRSL SIG? The goal of the IPRSL SIG is to have a place where people, engineers, and companies can collaborate around CentOS Stream, specifically around large-scale infrastructure. Lots of companies deploy CentOS Stream in production, and everybody kind of ends up doing their own thing and reinventing the wheel. Everybody has to figure out how to do with packaging. Everybody has to figure out how to deploy the distribution. Every, everybody tends to kind of do these things, and there wasn't really a place for people to collaborate on it. And the idea of the SIG is to provide a venue where folks can all work together on things like the kernel and the system packages and all of these, so that all of these in-house development that normally happens behind closed doors can open in the open. And this is open to anybody that's interested in working in this space. You don't have to work for a large company to join the SIG. Uh, and we actually have a lot of productive members in the SIG that don't work for companies directly. So uh, we, you can see the chart six charter there. Uh, if you're interested, that's what we use when we originally created the SIG. It hasn't been updated in a while. Most of the documentation that we maintain these days is on sysdosantos.org slash hyperscale. Um, we are trying to keep that up to date. Uh, and that's what we are also using for our internal SIG documentation uh, to document best practices and how we do things. Um, so hopefully that is useful. If there are things you would like to see there, if there are things that don't make any sense, please let us know and we can fix it. Or even better, use the button in the top right and send a PR because um, the repo is public. We've published uh, a periodic activities reports like all six. Uh, you can see the links to the last one on the top uh, from 2012 Q1. Uh, and this talk will go over a few of the things that are in there and then some of the stuff that happened between then and now. So first of all, we started in 2001. We started with six members. We're at 22 members now. Um, every time I update this slide, it's really nice because I get to bump that number. It's been great to see more and more people and companies joining the SIG and collaborating. Uh, we generally hang out on IRC in CentOS Hyperscale or on the Matrix room, the two are bridged together. Um, I think most of us are in on various US time zones, uh, so you're more likely to find us on US time zones, uh, but you're welcome to write something. There's usually someone logging the channel that can reply afterwards. We have bi-weekly meetings uh, on IRC. Uh, you can find the meetings menus on their website. Uh, I just updated that last week because I remember we forgot to add a few of those. Uh, you're welcome to join the meetings, even if you're not on the SIG. Uh, the meetings are generally working sessions, so we'll talk about what we're doing and what we want to do and things like that. We also do monthly video hackathons where we all hop on a conference page and either work on something together or just hang out and talk. We found this is really useful to help build a report between people, especially now that everybody's remote and there aren't that many opportunities to hang out in person. Um, finally, we have an issue tracker that we use to coordinate most of the work we do. Uh, we try to keep that in reasonable shape, and that's where we will file issues whenever things come up uh, or work items that we want to track. Uh, we also put up a page where we started tracking conference talks that we've done or talks that are around the subject, so you can reference previous talks there. Uh, if there are things I mentioned that don't seem to make a lot of sense, uh, you can probably find a talk there that talks about those more in depth. Or, of course, you're welcome to ask questions as well. OK, so what do we actually do? Uh, the scope of the SIG is, in general, on trying to get uh, to make the distribution more useful for large-scale deployments. So one of the main deliverables we have is package backports. So we try to deliver backports of key packages that we care about that tend to be faster moving than what CentOS provides. CentOS will generally be fixed on a version for a specific package, um, for things, for example, like systemd, and we may want to have something that tracks a bit more closely to upstream. Uh, then for some other packages, we will ship packages that they implement policy or configuration alternatives. So one example early on was um, switching the default um, for firewalling from using NF tables to using IP tables so that IP tables deployments could also be supported. Uh, we also have a dedicated repo for large scale testing enablement where we, that we use for staging features that may not be quite yet suitable for production, but we want to be in a state where they can be deployed and they may also be deployed in production in some environments if people want to. More recently, we started doing work on the kernel specifically and delivering kernels as part of hyperscale. 
and we produced uh, live DVD ISO images uh, for a distribution spin. Um, I will have a slide later on the live DVD um, with the details. So let's talk about Paxi backports first. You can find the backports uh, in our repo, in our main repo. You can DNF install, CentOS release, hyperscale, and that should hook you up with that. Packages in this repo are meant as dropping replacement for stock CentOS packages. So they shouldn't introduce regressions. They should work just about the same as the stock CentOS packages. However, because they are different packages, we highly recommend you file bugs on our tracker instead of Bugzilla, because otherwise maintainers will be confused. Um, in general, our packages assume that you're going to be using a PEL. Uh, they're built against the PEL in the build route. They will require a PEL at runtime. Uh, not all packages will have direct dependencies onto a PEL, but in my opinion, CentOS in and of itself isn't terribly useful without a PEL anyway, so there's no real harm in doing that. We initially targeted only x 64 but most recently we started targeting ARM as well. And nowadays we build everything for both x 64 and AR64, and we intend to continue doing so moving forward. One recent addition um, that um, Oscar developed was uh, a system to have automated package updates. So one issue if you, if you work in a SIG that you may have noticed is that if you maintain a set of packages, you have to constantly keep track of what CentOS is doing upstream because if you have, for example, your own version of a package and the distribution pushes a new version or a new rebuild, then you need to update yours or it will get superseded. Um, so we built a system that leverages the MQTT notifications that come from GitDoSensors.org so that whenever there is a build happening upstream, if the Nevra for that build is greater than the Nevra for our build, it will file an issue so that we can deal with it uh, and get the package built in time. Uh, this is especially useful for things like the RPM stack, where we don't we rebuild the existing packages in CentOS with patches applied, but we don't build a newer version. So it's, it's kind of a version race with CentOS there. Uh, this system is running on OpenShift. You can find the sources there, and that's also where the issue, issue that this file automatically are. Uh, this isn't hyperscale specific. Uh, there's some there's a configuration that you can set in the code. So we hope this can be useful for other SIGs as well. Uh, and if you end up using this uh, and it's useful or not useful, we will welcome feedback and PRs, of course. The next thing here, of course, is once you have a way to get notified that packages need to be updated as well, maybe we can also automate rebuilds. Uh, that is something we will be looking at because it's something I'm personally interested in. Just the less the less manual work we can do, the better. Um, so hopefully we can do something there, uh, either by doing automated builds or maybe once we have uh, PRs working properly for the CentOS, having a way to pull up a PR with uh, automated CI that will give us signal on whether it's going well or not. Uh, let's talk about systemd briefly. So systemd is probably the major package we have in the set of our backports. Uh, we have a branch tracking the latest systemd upstream. Uh, currently we track 250. We will soon update that to be on 251. We now release builds for both stream 8 and stream 9. Um, these builds should work just fine on a stock central system. However, you should be aware they have some slight differences in the setup. Uh, so for first thing first, they default to C group 2, uh, while a stock center system doesn't default to C group 2. Uh, we also enable a number of components that aren't enabled in stock centers by default that might need extra things. So if you want to use UMD, for example, you need a kernel with PSI, with um, pressure information. Um, so you need to pass PSI equal 1 if you're using a stock, a stock centers kernel. We also ship network D and resolve D uh, if you want to use them. Most recently, we've shipped uh, a number of improvements in the journal that were shipped in system the upstream that are now available in Hypercell as well. This includes optimizations when using copy and write file systems like BatterFS. And because this is something we ship as part of the SIG uh, and it needs to work on a stock central system, we also ship uh, with SE Linux support. Uh, the SE Linux support is kind of wonky. So if you try it and it doesn't work out, uh, we would welcome feedback, especially if you try it and it doesn't work out, you actually know IC Linux and know how to fix it. That would also be great because uh, none of us are experts on IC Linux. Uh, so it would be it would be very useful to get feedback on that. Um, and yes, uh, if you use our repos, you can use system D250 on CentOS Stream 8 uh, and soon 251 once we publish the build. Uh, we have a repo that we use where we track the development work for systemd, where we have branches and you can see the patches, the exploded patches staged there. Uh, and we have a separate repo where we keep our tooling uh, for release engineering uh, and for development. We've tried documenting the process of how we build our systemd release in detail as much as possible, both to make it easy for our engineers to work on it, but also if people from the outside want to reproduce the same setup. 
And finally, we have account build system uh, that takes the current hyperscale packaging and uses it to build the latest system DKID master every day uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time or something, and publishes packages for both stripe eight and stripe nine to the candidate repo on build docs. And the idea here is that if something changes upstream, we can get early signal that a feature might be causing issues. And we can also use this for automated testing. Originally, the script was a pile of bash that was pretty terrible, and it's now being re-implemented in Python uh, in a way that is much more supportable and easier to maintain in the future, hopefully. This was done as part of adding support for Stream 9. Uh, and this also runs on the OpenShift CI uh, that CentOS provides. Uh, speaking of Stream 9, you, as you hopefully all know now, Stream 9 is a thing, and it's available, and you can use it. All of our packages now target both Stream 8 and Stream 9, where it makes sense. Because for some packages, there's no point in building them for Stream 9 because the distribution already provides them. So we don't need to provide a backport. As part of the work we've been doing within the SIG, we've tried also contributing changes to Stream 9 directly. Uh, this is the list that I had in previous slides. The new additions from the last time I gave this talk are that we were able to contribute changes to LiveVA and to Wayland. And we also um, were able to get H2 rebase to 5.16, uh, which had the support for additional counters and hardware types. Um, which in so in this in the case, for example, of this tool, if you are on CentOS Stream 8, you can use the hyperscale backport to use the same version. If you're on CentOS Stream 9, the stock version will be already at 516. Uh, I mentioned before the large scale testing. Uh, this is a separate repo that we use for testing changes to the distribution in production settings. The main thing we have there is the DNF copy on write stack. Uh, this is a change to the DNF, to our, the RPM and DNF stack that we've been working on for several years at this point to implement copy on write optimizations to make it more efficient on file system using copy on write like .rfs. This obviously requires patching the packaging stack because it involves changes to both RPM and DNF. It is currently deployed in production at Meta, um, and, but it's something you can use today if you want by enabling that repo. And I've linked to this HackMD that details uh, what the state of this work is and what the next steps are. We are hoping to eventually get this in Fedora proper um, but there's still quite a lot of work to do there to get it merged in RPM upstream. Uh, now onto the kernel. As I mentioned, we also have our own kernel now. Uh, specifically, we have a 514 kernel that is based on the CentOS Stream 9 kernel that is made available for both Stream 8 and Stream 9. Similar to System D, we have our own three um, that, that we use to stage patches. We build the same kernel for both 8 and 9. This kernel has ButterFS enabled, so you can you can use ButterFS for systems with it. Uh, and we try to keep the ButterFS stack in it somewhat, somewhat up to date. Um, ideally, we would like to do as much of this work as possible within the CentOS Stream 9 kernel itself. Um, we don't want to have to maintain patches specific to Hyperscale in the long term. And this is something we're actively working on with our L kernel team in figuring out a contribution path that works well. Uh, one issue you should be aware of if you try to use this kernel is that there is no secure. Sorry, what happened? Oh, wrong slide. Uh, I don't need a laser pointer. I don't know why that turned on. All right, uh, there we are. Uh, there is no secure boot support um, because we're still trying to figure out how to get secure boot working on CBS. If you're interested in secure boot support for CBS, which I know is something that impacts other things as well, there is an issue on the CentOS Infra Tracker uh, that you can follow for that. Uh, but for now, if you're okay with not having secure boot, you can get this kernel from the experimental repo. Uh, I mentioned that we are trying to get as much as possible of these into the kernel, the upstream kernel, the upstream CentOS Stream 9 kernel itself. Uh, we've documented the contribution process, and if you would like to contribute changes to the to the CentOS Stream kernel, that's the process that we've been following so far that hopefully can work for you as well. Uh, so far, we helped resync the Z standard stack to 5.16, and we also added support for um, CryptoBlade 2B, which was a prerequisite for ButterFS, and we've contributed some build fixes. In the future, we hope to be able to contribute fixes to more subsystems and help help maintain parts of this kernel. Um, I should also mention that in parallel, the KML SIG is producing standalone KMOS for ButterFS that can be used with the stock RL kernel. So if you're not using the hyperscale kernel, but you're using the stock CentOS 9 or L9 kernel, you can use KML ButterFS for the KML SIG to get ButterFS support on that stock kernel, um, which is, is great and is a great example of collaboration between six and we would like to see more of these in the future. On the user space side, uh, I already mentioned ButterFS. Uh, on the user space side, we backport ButterFS proxy on Fedora and we try to keep it up to date. Is at 5.16 right now. 
We've also added a build of com size, which is a handy tool if you're using file system compression to see the size of compressed files as well. Um, and as part of the work in the for the for the live DVD spins, we've restored ButterFS support in the storage stack and the installer so that a new system can be installed directly on a ButterFS road drive. Recently, we also updated a few more packages. I already talked about East tool. Um, the other thing we updated recently was KPatch, which implements the kernel live patching framework. This is also something that we use in production and meta uh, that we found useful to build as part of hyperscale. Uh, CentOS already ships with KPatch, but it doesn't include the ability to build package patches. So we included support for KPatch build, so one can build their own kernel patches if they want. And we also backported support for Clang PGO optimizations and for a number of other fixes that were made upstream. Um, other deliverables we've been working on recently were the container image. Uh, Hyperscale had a container image for a while. This image is built from scratch. It doesn't use the stock um, CentOS image, uh, but it's built from nothing. You can get it on Quay there. And more recently, we streamlined the process that we use for building this image, and you can get it for both Stream 8 and Stream 9. This is still, unfortunately, manually built. Um, well, it's built with a script, but it, the script has to be triggered by a human. Um, but we would like eventually to get this onboarded onto OpenShift as well, so we can get automated builds of the container image, either on a daily basis or whenever this package updates, ideally. Um, again, if you use this, please let us know if what works, what doesn't, or file issues. This is what we are using for what is worth internally for our CI, so it gets, it gets reasonably good testing there. Oh, live media. So as I mentioned before, another thing we produced um, for a while now, actually, is live media spins. So we have for CentOS Stream 8, we have two spins, one with GNOME and one with KDE Plasma. And these are live DVD ISOs in the style of the Fedora install ISOs, if you ever use those. But the live DVD ISOs of CentOS Stream with the Hyperscale repos already enabled and the Hyperscale package is already baked in. This uses our kernel with ButterFS support out of the box. So if you use these ISOs, you can install a system on a ButterFS file system already straight out with our with our systemd and our packages in it. You can download them from there and you can file issues at um, in that repository. Again, if you use these, don't file issues with CentOS, but file issues there so we can triage them appropriately. Uh, all of the work that's done for this is maintained upstream. There's nothing, there's no like secret sauce here or anything. There is a small number of packages that are used um, that re will replace core packages, mostly for branding. And these are the shipped in a dedicated hyperscale spin repo. Now, this is only for stream eight at the moment. We are going to release CentOS Stream 9 spins soon. Uh, that is contingent on having the ability to build CentOS Stream 9 images. Um, Neil has been working uh, for the past few months on getting the ability to build images using Kiwi. Uh, we would also like in the future to be able to build these images through CDS and not, not externally, because we like to be able to leverage the CentOS infrastructure as much as possible. And those conversations are still in progress on how to how to enable the ability to build these spins in CBS alongside other content. Coming up, uh, we're making good time. Uh, as I mentioned, we would like to have automated uh, live image media builds. Uh, there's ongoing work to get an updated Kimu package in Appel, which is something of interest to Hyperscale as well, because we maintain updated version of the virtualization stack. Um, there's ongoing interest in exploring ButterFS transactional updates, um, do we, though we haven't done work on that lately. This is something that's still on our radar that we would like to see at some point. Uh, I already mentioned that we'd like to have a continuous build pipeline for the container images. Uh, we would also like to have hyperscale-enabled cloud images available as soon as possible, and again, also tied up in a CI pipeline, ideally. And finally, um, some folks that joined the SIG recently are working on a repo to provide packages optimized for Intel architectures. So if you're running a system with Intel and that is as performance sensitive workloads, you might be able to get optimizations by using these packages. Uh, the repo for this already exists, uh, but the packages aren't tagged yet in it. Um, they are in CBS if you want to play with them though, um, but they, I assume this will be available shortly. Uh, I think this is all I have. Uh, I will leave you with a few resources, as I mentioned before, uh, the SIG charter, the documentation, the channel where we hang out on Libra or on Matrix, the calendar where you can find the dates if you want to join a meeting either on IRC or over VC, our issue tracker, and finally the CentOS Devel mailing list where we have long-form conversations. That's all I have, and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. Let's see. 
was there anything in the Q&A tab? Nope. Mm. Yeah, I think I answered the inflate questions in the chat. Any questions, anything else folks want to talk about? Oh, Stuart has a question, I think. I wonder if there's a micro scale seek for small multi-site small businesses and home cloud servers. Um, there isn't a SIG targeting that specifically as far as I know, but you could certainly start it. With that said, the hyperscale is a bit of a misnomer in that I think a lot of this stuff originates from large scale environments, but that doesn't mean it's useful only for large scale environments. Um, as a matter of fact, I happen to run the CentOS hyperscale being at home on my home router, which is definitely not a like, large scale infrastructure. Um, so you might still find something here useful for your use case. Um, but also, if you if you are interested, uh, the CentOS project is always interested in having new SIGs and fostering the environment for building new SIGs. So it would be really great to also have a SIG targeting specifically smaller environments. Um, Bala is asking, where would be the slides? Uh, I will make a PDF of this and give it to Sean right after this talk, so it can be published on the wiki. And any other speakers listening, if you want to send me your slides, I'll uh, upload them onto the wiki too. Yeah, and and usually I upload my stuff on SlideShare. Um, so if you Google um, my name and Santos, it will probably get you eventually to the SlideShare website with all of the previous talks I've given. Or you're welcome to message me or send me an email if you can't find them. Um, just looking over if there was anything. Looks like that's everything. Everybody's just had a day and their brains are full of information. So that seems fair. We can go back to all the way track. Cool. Well, thank you for that presentation. And um, the hallway track will be, um, I, I think Hoppin will have it open for another two hours or so. I don't know if I'll be in there for two hours, but um, <laughs> I'll see you all back there. And, and uh, thanks everybody for joining. Thank you all.